Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, basically, I just wanted to uh, kind of give you an overview of what I've been up to. Um, I've been wanting a bigger tank, and um, I actually went on YouTube and tried to discover some new ideas about, you know, using a tank and a test tank for outboards. And uh, I came across RMD Creations. Uh, Michael is his name. He's uh, he's really good. I like him a lot. Uh, um, just want to give a shout out to him. This was his idea, and uh, I kind of liked it, so I'm going to pattern my pattern my uh, his idea after what I want to do. Maybe slightly a little, slightly different, but uh, pretty much uh, the same thing. I'm going to use a uh, a blower motor uh, with a, to vent to ventilate the uh, fumes from the tank in in my garage, and I'll go up to the ceiling to the attic and then out the vent uh, out the side of the house. So I, I think that's okay. I don't have a shop per se that's separate from the house, but uh, I don't think there's anything, uh, any laws I'm breaking here, but I don't think. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I haven't got all my materials in. I, I want to hook up a, probably an outlet here uh, on the wall so I can plug in this blower motor. Uh, I've got to get some two by, maybe two by eights or a two by one, two by eight, at least for here, so I can mount it here and uh, Michael had some good ideas about using U-bolts to connect it up with, uh, with hardware uh, to the 2x10 or 2x8 or 2x6, whatever it was. And uh, I'd probably go with a, a 2x6, I think, because I think I'm going to secure it here and uh, go from there. So um, the tank was pretty clean. I actually got this tank from a, a local company, uh, maybe uh, 12 miles away from the house. I won't say the name of the company, but... Anyway, they were selling them, so uh, 25 bucks and, you know, basically gave it away. So uh, they, they used a 50-50 mixture of antifreeze in this, and it's completely empty now. It just needs to be cleaned out a little bit, And um, but antifreeze isn't a bad idea. Even in the wintertime, uh, you can add a little antifreeze to it to keep it from freezing, uh, but uh, in my garage, it's fairly warm. Uh, it's part of the house, so it's... Uh, it stays pretty, pretty, pretty nice in here, considering. Uh, but anyway, this is where I'm at so far, and uh, I've just got to cut a hole in the ceiling, secure it, ventilate it, and put some uh, uh, electricity in. Uh, I got to tap in, probably from the ceiling, and run something over and down the wall. But uh, I'll figure that out. I'm also going to get a hoist. Uh, it's a big electric winch uh, hoist. I'm thinking about Harbor Freight. They seem to have pretty good deals. Um, now I did some measurements and uh, this is, to this right here is 46 inches. And from the floor to the ceiling is about 106 inches. And uh, now using the largest motor I have is, a, is probably the, the biggest one I've worked on is the 85 horse Johnson from previous videos, and that Johnson is 55 inches from the skeg to the top of the cowling. So 55 plus 46, it's 101 inches, and then and so that means I've got to go into the wall, into the ceiling, secure it up in the rafters up there, maybe cut an opening in the ceiling to allow that to, to come up and down. So uh, stay tuned for that. So that's coming up, and um, I may, may or may not show that on the video, but uh, uh, but anyway, that's the plan. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel, uh, Live to Fish Outboard Repair. Now, you're wondering, what has all this got to do with outboard repair? Well, um, well I'm back on the project that uh, for the tote, for the test tank that I'm, I'm putting in. So I, I, I'm going to need a hoist. I'm going to need uh, electrical supply. Uh, uh, so, so I have electrical service I have to put in to power it and uh, also to power the pump or the motor that uh, generates the uh, exhaust. So what you're looking at here, the, the, uh, here's, this is the motor to the left. This is the, uh, the, the, the PVC is the, uh, is the uh, uh, intake where it's sucking it from the tank. And the steel is the exhaust going up into the attic and then out, out of the building. So, um, and of course, you see the uh, I, I've got the electrical outlets I needed to buy. I got a uh, switch and then two uh, electrical outlets. Um, 
What I did uh, realize uh, as I was going through this, I need another electrical box up in the attic. Um, and that brings me to the my, my schematic. As you can see here, of course, this is the tote. My workbench, I've got to install, I'm gonna install the box with three, three outlets and a switch. I've got the plastic intake to the motor. So the motor will be plugged in over here and the switch is on the wall. It's also got another switch on the motor, but, uh, but anyway, then the exhaust will come up here. That's the steel in and out outside of the house. Um, again, the steel is four and five eighths and the plastic was a little smaller. So this, it, so the steel was a little too sloppy. So we had to go with the plastic. Uh, it's, it's standard four inch, but, uh, uh, but if you look at the flanged end of the plastic, it's, it's actually more like four and three eighths. So it, it, it actually does fit over the, uh, the suction end of the motor. So that's why I had to, had to do that. I mean, I could have used the steel and made it consistent throughout, but this, this seems to be a little bit sloppier and I didn't want to use that. I wanted something that could have a little, little, little bit better uh, fit. So, well, it'll be white and then it'll be steel. I can always paint it if I want, but anyway, um, so the outlet I'm putting in here and what you see is the dotted lines are behind the wall. So I'll have to run the line, the, uh, the, uh, uh, 12, two wiring that I'm going to put in through the, behind the wall over, uh, over. So it's going to actually, let's, let me back up. We're going to, I've got an outlet up there already, but it's too far away. So I've got to put in another outlet here. So I'm going to tap into this one and run another outlet here. And then from there, it'll provide me power to come down to the switch and then back up again over to the hoist. And then the hoist will plug in here. Uh, the motor here will plug in over here. It's got a pretty long cord. So uh, probably about, it's got a six foot cord and I've only need about four feet. So I, I think that's where I'm going to position this. Um, I could I could move this down over over here more. I may, I may do that, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, depends on uh, how you know. I could do that. I could probably move this over here and then it just have it plugged in very 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 uh, conveniently there. So and while I'm doing this, my wife also wants me to put an, a, a light up above the uh, the door here. So I just got to run. Some uh, electric, uh, some uh, electrical line, 12, 12 two wiring. I'm gonna, I, I usually use twelve two. It's it's heavy. Uh, Fourteen two is code, so twelve twelve two will be just fine. I have it, so I'll use it, and come up with to uh, to the light here. So it'll provide more light when she comes in. If she comes in the side door, she can turn the light on, and boom, she's she can see. Um, the light to the garage is actually from the uh, from this side of the house, and the wiring can't go to the other side because there's a <laughs> the way the house is designed you just it just is no access so this makes sense anyway that's just a little added uh while i'm up there i might as well so anyway um that's the project for today i'm going to get the electrical in um and hopefully if i still have enough energy i'll put in the duct work um but uh i think that electrical is going to be enough for me today but that's where i'm going to that's where i'm going to start so keep watching. I uh, also wanted to add that uh, I had to buy these U-bolts. Uh, that's going to be for the 2 by 10 I bought a 2 by 10 uh, and a 1 by uh, 1 by 6 so that I can wedge or slap these two pieces of wood together on the outside of the outside and inside of the uh, tote to secure it so the motor can uh, clamp onto something. So that's what that is. I just wanted to add that that as well and then mention that I just the, what I spent for this whole project at this point uh, about 250 bucks so just under so if I if there's there maybe a few things I need to add to it or go to the store and get but uh, it'll be under 300 for sure the total cost excludes the exhaust fan as I had that in my inventory okay well instead of doing the electrical today I decided I wanted to do the uh start working on the duct work for this uh, tote for this test tank. And I, I'm uh, decided I'm going to use this ring, the center ring as my, uh, my suction point for the air. 
um, for the intake on the on the pump. So what I did is I took I took a, a 90 degree and I cut it so that it, it fits down in here. I actually cut a four inch hole, four and three eighths hole into this into this uh, threaded nut that uh, you know the lid basically that sits on top of this uh, tote. And I'm going to glue this in here like that. It's got a curvature there so that when it sucks, it, maybe it will deter it from sucking water up into it. That's kind of what I'm hoping because it's, it's, it's got a bend in it. And I'm going to aim it towards the motor. So when, it's, when, it, when the water's splashing back this way, it may not tend to come the opposite direction. So that's my theory. So when I hook this in, basically, uh, I haven't got all my pieces cut yet, but the idea is that, you know, this will go in there like this. It's not cut to size, but this will go on here like this. And, and I'll shorten this to where, to where this is going to go over, over here. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll put my two by six or two by 10 in front here. You bolt that on, make a cut in here so I can get the outboard motor to sit in here and then rest, rest here. I noticed that, uh, Michael on, uh, our, our MD creations, he, he actually cut this pipe and I, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep it because I think it'll add support strength. And I think that, that the long shaft, maybe this, because this is a, maybe a smaller tote than he used. This is a 275 gallon. I think he used a bigger one, like a 300. So his, he might have had to cut it down in order to to make the uh, the outboard, uh, you know, the uh, uh, lower unit sit properly inside the tank. But I'm going to leave it because I need the height. Uh, because even that uh, 85 horsepower, I want to be able to see if I can get that in there if I don't sell it before... Uh, before I get a chance to do it. But um, I'm gonna try and get that motor in here without without hitting the bottom of it. So that I should have enough depth in there and I should be able to run it at least at idle. I, I'm not looking to run it at full, full throttle, but at least at idle. I can't, can't really run it in idle in this 55 because it just it just empties it almost immediately. So it's way, way too big of a motor to even, I can run it, run it at idle, but I cannot run it in gear at idle. So in that 55. So this is, this is what my uh, hopes is just to, you know, get this going, get the electrical up. And, uh, so anyway, keep watching and you'll see more progress. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is my, my actual plan here. Um, I just moved the pump. I'm going to slide the, this over closer to the, 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 uh, the blower motor it's closer to the uh, intake on the exhaust and this bend. So it's going to be a supported in about the middle or so, or, or just offset. <clears throat> I don't think that's a problem. Um, I was thinking the further away this was, the better, maybe because so it wouldn't suck water into the, uh, into the uh, motor. But <clears throat> I think with the bend that I have in there, the, nine, the 90 degree that I cut, <clears throat> I think that's going to keep water from getting in there. And I, and I can mount this, uh, I think it's a two by six or one by six, <clears throat> one by six. I can mount this in and maybe put J bolts in to secure this. And, uh, so this is the idea. Uh, this will be the exhaust. Of course, this is just a mock-up. Um, I'll have a longer one going up into the ceiling. When I line that up, I'm going to probably put a clamp on this to seal it up and uh, squeeze it tighter. But uh, <clears throat> that's kind of the idea. I think that'll work quite nicely. So, um, but that's uh, that's where I'm at so far. So stay tuned. Um, you'll uh, you will see we'll see more as we go. But uh, once I get this all done, I'll probably end up caulking this or gluing it, um, <clears throat> just to keep everything sealed up good. I can even use some probably some epoxy or some silicone to seal it around there. Um, but uh, that's uh, where we're at so far. So if anybody's got any ideas out there about uh, maybe which direction that bend down below should be uh, with regards to the water being, uh, you know, sucked up into the pipe, 
Uh, give me your thoughts on that because I'm trying to figure out uh, what might be the best placement uh, for that bend or maybe even try to put some baffles inside to keep the water from uh, recirculating up that pipe. So try to comment if you can and let me know what your thoughts are. I'd like to hear some pe from people to see what uh, what maybe some engineers out there or people with some good ideas and maybe I can adapt that into this uh, into this model. So I'd appreciate it. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. So stay tuned for part two, and uh, you'll see the completion of this model, hopefully, and possibly an engine running uh, in this tank. So that's my objective. So thanks again for watching. Give me a thumbs up.